Hello everyone, this is Taff, this is Taff's Word and this could possibly be the final Taff's Word of the season and hopefully the next Taff's Word after this one will be me talking about our plans for League 2 for next season not our I wonder what's going to happen to us staying in the conference next season um, I went to Carlisle half time thinking oh my god, oh my god, oh my god but those of, those of you that were there well, understand what I'm saying now. Um, we were not taking a single thing for granted for the time that we were winning 1-0 at that, in that game. Carlisle come at us with everything they had. Um, it reminded me an awful lot of the Plymouth game, when I tell you something. If not for Joe Day, it could have been a similar scoreline. Um, but the thing is, first half, started off first 20 minutes, all them, um, they were getting closer and closer to scoring. Then, all of a sudden... You know, we flicked the switch and we started coming forward. Mark Randall was running our midfield. Alex Samuel was the danger man. Funny enough, we lose both of them by the second half and then everything goes to rat ship. But the pleasing thing was Lennon John Lewis coming off the bench and actually looking pretty sharp. So um, in, in a regular circumstance, you can talk about the positives you can take from the game and stuff like that. You know, you can... You know, give a, a match report that says, you know, we may have lost this one, but in the coming weeks, you know, Lennon John Lewis would be a big, uh, a, you know, be like having a new signing and everything like that. But the fact is, we got one game left in the season, and we got one last, one last roller coaster at the ride to see us through. And the the question has been put forward um, since we got promoted: Does Newport really want? A football league team. How much does Newport want a team in the football league? Well, we're looking at a sellout. The first sellout since the Grimsby playoff semi final second leg in 2013. You know, um, we had the biggest home crowd we've had since our first few games in the football league. Um, you know, uh, well, whilst being back up, it's the, it's the highest home crowd we had for Accrington. So, with the question, how much does Newport want a football league club? Well, I think we've answered that now. Newport does want a football league club. And hopefully, if we manage to keep ourselves in the football league next season, these crowds will keep coming. Because <laughs> that's exactly what we need. If you want to sustain ourselves, and I've been calling the supporters out, for a long time on these vlogs now. We need to support the club the best way we can as fans because at the end of the day, we can always point the finger at the board for not doing this and not doing that. But at the end of the day, without the resources to do this and do that, you can't just, you know, they can't wave a magic fucking wand, you know. Us as fans, I mean, I, I'm not the most well-off person in the world, but, I mean, I buy my season ticket every year. I've got, two lottery numbers well well I pay like the eight pound eighty odd I think it's eight pound eighty eight I pay for for um you know the two lots of numbers on the lottery uh, the county lottery um I'm on the rewards and benefits scheme I, I renew my uh, trust membership every year you know even though I, I, I get my season ticket I still do the fifty fifty to make the club that little bit more money. I, I'm doing my bit I feel I'm not expecting everybody to go completely out of the way. I'm not expecting everybody to give what they haven't got. But what I'm hoping is that they quit moaning and I can start doing. It's like, all right, and you want the club to do better? Do something about it, you know? But now, people are doing something about it, you know? We're, se we're selling out a game now, you know? We're, we're increasing our grades. We're pulling people over. Come on, come and support us. For God's sake, you know, as much as you believe it or not, as much as you want it or not, Newport County is your club, you know, they're the ones who represent you, your community, the town or city that you're from, you know, the place that you're from. I'm from Newport, you know, lived in Betis all my life, you know, born in the Royal Grant Hospital. I'm Newport through and through, and Newport County is my team. I grew up in Liverpool, and people know this. I've said this on these vlogs many, many times before. I grew up supporting Liverpool in such a plastic way. It would make you sick. It would make myself sick. I try not to talk about it, but um, you know, I still got, a, I still got a love for Liverpool. That'll never die, you know, because that's that stuff just doesn't leave you. But the love you feel for your hometown club is just, it just completely trumps anything, 
You know, I mean, I, I love Newport County more than I love the Welsh national team. You know, Newport County, club before country, I always live by that. I always support Wales, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, Newport County is one of the biggest things in my life. I mean, i got a, I got a lovely fiancé, she's the most important thing to me, but Newport County is, is one of the most important things in my life, and it'll always be a priority to me. And I'll always make sure that I'm doing my bit to further the cause, you know, to see this club move forward. And um, I think if you call yourself a Newport County supporter, the type of club that we are and the type of ownership we have now, which we all signed up for, by the way, I think it's our duty, you know, to do that. If we call ourselves a Newport County supporter, we should be willing to go above and beyond to uh, to push this club forward together. Now, that's the one big point I wanted to make in this vlog as well, the togetherness. I've also mentioned that clubs like Accrington, Barnet and Morgan do a lot better than us. They do a lot better than us, even though they have smaller crowds and a smaller uh, sort of fan base. The reason they do better than us is because their fans come together and actually work together. Now, a lot of the time we've been talking, um, you know, amongst the fans, oh, we need to find something to unite under. And everyone thought that the fans' takeover would, would give the trust the opportunity to unite all the supporters under that one banner. But they haven't been able to do it. The supporters' partnership haven't really been able to do it. What's done it is putting a local lad as the manager of the football club. That galvanised this club. That brought the people over to come and watch us. you know, And that got us all together, singing together. The atmospheres have been brilliant. you know. Our support has been absolutely second to none. And that's because we've all come together and we've actually learned to respect one another. You know, we're all fighting in the same corner. We're all pushing for the same thing. We want to see this football club thrive. We want to see this football club move forward. That's what we all want. So the petty differences that we have, why can't we push them all to one side and then join hands and move forward with this club? Because it's well, well within our capabilities to do it. We've got plenty of people who are capable of doing amazing things. So why not? You know, why can't we? Well, we are now, and this is the benefits we're getting. We've turned an 11-point deficit into a two-point... Well, we jumped over to the other side. We've made 13 points. You know, that, that's that, that's what we've accomplished, you know. That's what Flinney and his boys have accomplished on the field. And the, th and the thing is, they, they, they tell us we're an important part of that. And yeah, we have been an important part of that, and we will continue to be an important part of this club's future in the Football League. Because I, I know for a fact we're staying up. No, I'll rephrase that. I don't know for a fact because you never know with football. But the odds are very, very much in our favour. It's in our hands. we just got to go and we just got to win. And the thing is, when we've really, really needed that win, we've gone out there and we've got it and we slugged our guts out for it. And as much as it, the anxiety is just so much. But I tell you something, as, as I've said plenty of times, this anxiety be worth every goddamn second of it if we stay in the Football League and we complete the great escape. And I fully expect us to. But like I say, we, football is just... Sometimes it can be cruel. This season's been very cruel. And I don't think it can get any crueler. So I'd imagine with everything we've been through this season, to end it on this high, and then we could be given the opportunity to take some momentum into next season... You know, build on the team we've got because we have got some good players. You know, we don't win football matches without good players, so we have got some good players there. You know, we try and keep this team together. You know, ship out the dead wood, improve on key positions. Like if Joe Day leaves, we've got to replace him, and we have to sufficiently replace him. We have to have a goal scorer. We have to have a twenty goal a season um, goal scorer, and the rewards and benefits will give us that mind. We get 1,000 people sign up to the rewards and benefits scheme. That's a minimum of a £100,000 a year for the club. £100,000 will get you that 20 goal a season striker and replace the goalkeeper. So the rest of the budget then gets us another top class defender. It gets us another good midfielder. you know. And then all of a sudden we're looking at the other end of the table. Rewards and benefits, I'm going to come back to that now for the summer. That is going to be one of the things I'm going to highlight in the summer. Just waiting to get a bit more information from the club on exactly how how deep um, it is with rewards and benefits with all the different businesses you can actually save money on. 
and the benefits of actually having it. So uh, look out for that one. But in the meantime, I say one more, just one more push, one one more effort, and that's all it takes. One more big effort, like we've been banging eight since Flynn, Flynnie took over, and and we're there. You know, we've stayed up. <laughs> and, you know, after Leighton Orient, who would have really believed it? But now we've caught it. You know, it's in our hands. We just got to take it. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you've had something good about this season. I'm sure there's been a couple of highs, many, many lows. Let's finish on the biggest high of all, because this will feel like a promotion to us, because as far as we were concerned, we were gone. We were relegated. Now this will be like a promotion back into the Football League again, as big as Wembley. So let's see if we can do it. I've, I've, I have every faith that we can. And thanks again for watching, and I shall see you all on Saturday. And then I'll see you talking about our future in the Football League in the pre-season vlogs. Thanks very much again. Cheerio. Up the county.